Hi guys, Matt Collins here from Beausoleil. In this video, I'm going to revisit an all-time classic. It's the Mono Hair Rig. I've been fishing various versions of this rig for the last three years. I've learned an awful lot about it. It might look the simplest, most basic rig in the world, but there are some tiny little details that are so important to get right. I've got a new little twist to it, which really enhances the performance of the rig. And I've caught some absolutely amazing specimens while I've been testing this rig. It's a true all-rounder. It could well be the only rig you'll ever need. So these are the materials that I'm going to be using to tie this rig. We'll start off with the main component. So this is a mono hair rig, so we're going to be using some 20 pound bullet mono. Now, if you're using 15 pound main line, then just use some of your main line. Then we're going to need a run rig rubber, hair stops. I'm just going to use a little two ounce lead. Obviously you can use bigger leads, but two ounce will fish this nicely over a range of substrates. We need a shod style hook. It could be beak point, could be straight point, but it must be an outturned eye hook. Then we need a size eight ring swivel, some rig tubing, I'm using some little 15mm baits, could be 18mm baits, could be 20mm baits, it really doesn't matter. And then this is really important, I haven't got the retail pack of these unfortunately, but you're going to need some little hook beads. Okay, to start we're just going to get some of the mono. And the first thing I'm going to do is just check it between my fingers, make sure that there are no kinks or nicks. It also helps straighten it out. And then we're going to measure off 40 centimetres of material. Then we're going to tie a nice, small, neat overhand knot. This is the knot which is going to go inside the bait. So whatever size bait you're using, you need a loop small enough to go inside that bait. So in order to make a small loop, what I do, just open that up again, if I hold the knot there and I pull down like that, that'll make the knot small. If I were to immediately pull from the loop, it would make the knot bigger. So if I just pull that down like that, when I'm happy with the size of the loop, then we can slip the rig puller in there, wet that down, and just tighten him up so he's nice and small and neat. We can have the tag end off nice and close. Then we get a 15 mil bait. Very carefully pierce him through the middle. I always just spin it round like that, make sure I'm going through the middle before I commit to going all the way through the needle. And if you put your finger there, just very gently press with the baiting needle, it stops it bursting through the other side and splitting the bait. Hook on our loop. Very carefully pull that in until the loop emerges out the other side. Then we're going to take our hair stop. I like these little extender stops actually because it means I can bury the stop inside the bait. So we get round to there like that and I pull on the material and you see that see that hair stop disappearing inside the bait well the carp have got a very sensitive organ on the roof of their mouths it's called the palatal organ and that's what helps them sort food from non-food item so that's food that's not food so I don't want a bit of plastic touching that palatal organ if I can help it so if I just pull it nice and neatly into the bait then that's what I'm looking to achieve. Okay, now we need to grab a hook. Before I grab a new hook, I just run my finger that direction and I'm searching for a burr, but I can't feel one. And then just a little run underneath there. Yeah, no burr, so that hook should be perfect. So then we need one of these little hook beads. You've got a blunt end and a tapered end. I'm going to insert the hook in the tiny, tiny hole in the blunt end. Just be, oh, that's gone nicely actually, that's already, you can see the point just poking out there. And once he's through, just very carefully pinch and slide it round. 
Now if you've never bought or used hook beads before, different hook beads will suit a different range size of hooks. So you've got hook beads that will suit size 1 to 6 and hook beads that will suit size 7 to 10. Just make sure you're using the right size hook bead for the right size range of hook. Now we're going to take the tag end and we're going to go, that's the back side of the eye, that's the front side of the eye. The front side is always near the point and we must thread from the back and exit the front like that. If we don't do that, this rig will not work. So there's a join in the eye and it's on this side of the hook. So the first wrap of the knotless knot must be on that side. If you whip that side first, there's a risk that that join can actually cut the mono. You can see the hook bead is positioned just opposite the point there. My nail's opposite the point there as well. And I'm just going to pull the bait up until it nestles just in between my thumb and my index finger there. And that point fixes the hair length, roughly the same length each time. And then we whip away from the joint in the eye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven turns I'm going to do here. And once we get to that point there, We've just got to maintain tension, hold the knot, and then we pass from the back out the front. That's really, really important that. If you don't do that, again, it's not going to work. Once you get to that point, just wrap the mono around a the finger there. Leave your index finger and thumb free if you can. And then, Hold that there, slide the hook bead up, and that does a number of things. This hook bead is stopping the mono relaxing. If that wasn't there, those wraps would open up and I'd lose control of the exit point of the hair, which is so critical. This is kicking out the hair from the shank, and this is really important. So that's how the finished rig should look. So let's have a look at how this performs on the palm test. He's in. He's in. He's in instantly. That stiff hair is forcing the hook to just turn and grab. A good way back as well. That's a good 30 mil back. He's in. Oh, bit of slippage that time, but he's still turned over pretty quick. He's in again. So that's how it should work. Now, if I take that hook bead out of the way, I don't know whether you can see this, but the knotless knot has just started to relax a bit. And if I wiggle that about any, it opens up a little bit more. If we have a look what happens on the palm test, it goes in like that. Oh, it did turn. Ow. Oh, there we go. Can you see it's sliding? Now, on the bottom of a carp's mouth, there's a really kind of fine membrane back here behind the lips. Now, I tried this rig many, many years ago, tied like this. And what I found was that if you have the hair exiting along the line of the shank, what happens is the hook will cut through that membrane and you'll be, it'll create a nasty tear in the bottom of the fish's mouth. And I hated to see that and I stopped using this rig. But the addition of that little hook bead cures this problem. I'll show you that again. It did catch there, but you see it just kind of nicks it. it. There we go. Just tends to skid. And that's not what you want. Whereas if I squeeze that hook bead into place, it just kicks that hair out. We're in. And you can see when I pull, 
the point pivots and it wants to dig in. It wants to dig in at a really aggressive angle. So it's not wanting to skate like that. It's wanting to dig and grab and you'll get phenomenal hook holds. So let's have a look how this simple little rig performs in a basic tank test. I'm using the bottom bait and you'll notice that the bottom bait sinks very quickly to the bottom and then the hook sits on the bend. Momentarily that hook hangs vertically but it's going to fall one way or the other, left or right. And because of the stiffness of the mono, it's going to drive that loop to fall left or right. This solves the problem of hook link looping up. The ring swivel at the other end enables that loop to fall friction free one way or the other. So there's no interference whatsoever. This keeps the mono hook link out of the way of the carp's senses. It makes it much harder for them to detect. This is going to get you more bites. This is going to catch you more carp. I've been fishing this rig an awful lot without putty. I just don't think there's a need to add putty. Now with a braided rig or a combi link type material, it's really important to add those little blobs of putty in order to get the whole thing to sink because you don't have the same mechanics as this simple mono rig. What you can see is because there's no supple sections, or pivoting sections or swivels halfway along this rig, there's nothing to tangle. You've just got one simple piece of mono that's basically a very, very soft spring. It just wants to be straight and fall into its natural position. If you're looking to simplify your fishing, to take away this, oh, what rig shall I use today? This is the most all round rig that I've ever come up with. It's absolutely you can take it anywhere catch anything small lakes massive lakes flowing water caught some smashing fish on the river using this rig just because of its anti-tangle properties just before dawn this morning i had a right result i had an absolute one tone on an open water spot that i've been fishing a little five bait stringer nothing complicated that basic rig that i've showed you and I've caught an absolute banger. He's named Pepe. It's the biggest common in the lake and it's a new lake record weight at 45 pounds, eight ounces. Let's get him out and have a look. Let's have a chat about hook link materials. When I first started fishing with this rig, I turned to one of my old favorites and that was big game. I like the 25 pound version, the 0.48 for fishing maximum range because it's got that bit of extra stiffness to it. For fishing medium range, I found that I could drop down to the 20 pound big game, which is uh, nowadays it's 0.38 diameter and that worked great too. This year I'm testing the Nash Bullet this is the 20 pound version in 0.40 and I've got to say, I really am liking this stuff. If the main line that you're using is between 0.35 and 0.40, I'm sure it's going to do a really good job for you with this rig. One of the massive bonuses of being able to use mono for a hook link is it's kind of free. This is the remains after I spooled up three of my reels a couple of weeks ago. There's 200 meters left on that. I need 40 centimeters per rig. You, well, you do the maths. It's an awful lot of hook links. If you're a big fluorocarbon fan, there's no reason at all why you can't use fluoro with this rig. Personally, I just don't think fluoro is necessary for the sort of fishing that I do. So I'd rather save the money and just use mono. Let's talk about hooks got to use outturned eye hooks, shod style hooks with this. If you're using an intern eye hook, it's going to close down that gape. It's going to end up looking like that. And that is not what you want. The little hook bead detail, it might seem like a tiny thing, but it makes a massive difference. 
When I first started experimenting with this rig, I tried my normal trick of whipping a couple of turns underneath the hair, and it just didn't quite work. The, the knotless knot slipped and it opened up and it moved, and I lost the exit point of the, uh, of the hair and it just wasn't quite right. Little hook bead, works a treat, slip it on, put it into position, reusable, what's not to like? So the absolute essentials of why this rig works so well, the stiffness of the 0.40 mono, the outturned eye hook, the little hook bead there which acts as a kicker and stops the hair rotating around and moving. You can play with the length of the hair, you know, if you like it tight to the bait, fish it tight. If you like a longer hair, fish it long. This is the sort of length that I've been fishing it at and it works great. You can also turn this into a really killer effective pop-up rig just with the addition of a split shot. Now if I'm doing the pop-up version, I do have a much shorter hair because I want the pop-up to be closer to the shank of the hook, but really effective, really simple. In terms of PVA options, it works great with a simple stringer. You can put some baits in one of the funnel web systems and create a little sausage. You can make up little crumb sticks, been doing that quite a lot and that's fantastic, just gives a nice little bit of flavour next to the hook. The only PVA option that this is not going to work with is a solid PVA bag. Bit of a shame, but the mono is just too stiff to get folded into a bag. You might be able to get away with it if you want to fish a really, really kind of short hook link, uh, a fairly large bag, just kind of fold it in. I haven't tried that, but you know, if you want to have a go with that, do have a go. Let me know how you get on. To go with this super simple rig, I've kept the lead system really simple as well. It's nothing more than the all time classic, the running ledger. Okay, we're gonna take our main line here and again, I'm just gonna run it through my fingers, straightens out any minor little kinks. Let's get a bit of heat into it, lets it settle. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the main line at an angle with a really sharp pair of scissors. If we just run our fingers over the end of the main line, if that feels all bird, then you need to treat yourself to a new pair of scissors. Then I take a one meter length of rig tubing and I'm going to cut that at a 45 degree angle as well. Just neatly like that. Square off the other end. So it's really important that we hold the rig tubing vertically. The rig tubing must be new and clean and dry. This is very difficult, if not impossible to do with old tubing. Nice, clean, fresh main line as well. And we just pump that through, raising the tube off the ground. Little quick movements. And there we go, it's through very quickly. And we're gonna take a two ounce swivel lead, put the main line through there and just pop them over the tubing like that. Then we take a run rig rubber and thread the main line from the tapered end out the fat end. And then you'll see why I've made this cut here. Just wet that up. It'll make it really easy to insert that rig tubing tight into that sleeve. There we go, that's gone a good eight mil down there. And it holds it really quite tight actually. Then we take our ring swivel I'm going to do the five turn tucked blood. One, two, three, four, five. Five up and then from the bottom, exit the top. And then we go immediately back down through the big loop like that. And we just nurse that down a little. Now's the time to wet that up. Now you see why I use a lighter. You could use a piece of PVA tube or a, or a bank stick or anything like that, but something smooth and round that I can just wrap a few turns of the main line around. Don't cross the wraps, okay? otherwise you'll damage the line. Rewet it if necessary, and you get to that point. I just pulled on the tag in there with my teeth again. Really neat, really secure. 
Right, and we're going to have the tag end off. No need to go silly tight with this because it's going to be covered by that tail rubber anyway. So just three, four mil, something like that. Then you just pull on the main line above the tubing. That disappears neatly in there. And you want to do it to the level where the barrel just disappears inside the silicon there. So that's a very simple little running lead system. And the lead's just going to fly up there like that. In the unfortunate event of a mainline failure, the lead's just going to pass straight over the end of the tubing because there's nothing there to stop it or interfere. And that will just run through very quickly. And as soon as we get to the end of the main line where the brake is, that will just drop off and disappear. It's all about speed of failure. This is why running rigs are safe. I've been using running rigs in one form or another for the last 12 years. I hardly ever use a lead clip system. If you watch my video on lead clips, you know that it's really easy to make a lead clip system dangerous by pushing the tail rubber on too hard or not pulling the swivel tightly into the lead clip. Whenever I find bust up rigs around this place, there's always a lead clip involved somewhere. If I find a running lead system, I might find the tube in or I might find the lead, but I never find the two together. This is because in the event of a failure, the lead just slides off. So for me, running lead systems are a safer and better way to fish for carp. You get fabulous bite indication. The carp cannot use the weight of the lead to throw the hook out. They're simple, they're reliable, and pretty much impossible to get wrong. So running lead systems can be fished over all sorts of bottom types. If you know that you're fishing over a really hard spot, then I'll probably use a three ounce or a four ounce lead. If I'm dropping a rig from a boat, I'd definitely use a four ounce lead as a minimum. If I'm not sure about what I'm fishing over, I want to use the lightest lead I can. Two ounce is a good place to start because a two ounce lead won't disappear too far into anything soft especially if you feel the lead down on the drop. Running lead systems are not just for small fish. I've caught some really big carp this year on nothing more than this basic hair rig and a simple running lead system. It's not just carp as well, I had some massive catfish. Probably about 65, 70 pounds, something like that. Back to the deep. All we're gonna do now is join the rig to the lead system and then we can go fishing. I'm going to use exactly the same knot, which is the five turn tucked blood. Right, we we'll just wet that up slowly and carefully, tighten that down. When it gets to that point now, I'm just going to pull on the tag end a bit, pull again. You see all those wraps tightening down. A really good pull. And we can see that all the wraps are nice and neat again. It's a solid knot. You'll see that when we use the puller on the knotless knot, this has changed the exit angle of the hair to the shank. So I'm just going to mass massage that round a bit. Let's give it a little tweak. Make sure the bead's tight. When I hold the hair, the hook hangs vertically like that. So that's the finished rig. It's really simple, but I tell you what guys, this is all you need to catch carp. So the carp's going to come along. It's going to pick up that rig. And as soon as he starts to move away, the tubing is just going to be sliding through that lead there. And this gives us an amazing amount of bite indication. The lead stays in place, so he can't use the weight of the lead to sling the rig out. Your line's connected to your rod, and then obviously on your reel. I fish with a tight clutch so that the fish will be working against that clutch to go anywhere with this lead system. So it's not as though it's just gonna fly through like that without any resistance. You've got the resistance of the clutch, you've got the resistance of the force of the water pressing on the line, you've got the elasticity of the main line. So this turns into a giant piece of elastic basically. And the fish will find it very hard to deal with. So I just wanted to run through the spots that I've been using this simple rig on and the little adjustments that I've been making to the setup. 
I'm going to be making a cast out onto one of the hard spots and what I've done is I've upped the lead size to I think this is a three, three and a half ounce, something like that. I like the bigger leads for those harder spots because I need the extra weight of the lead to hold in place. I need that bigger lead. So as always I'm going to wet the spool up. Nice big smack down there, that's on the money. I found this rig to be really tangle free, absolutely no issues at all. That's gone out clean, you know, I trapped the lead and felt it down, but this works even if I get the cast wrong. So I just fired that into the water there, no feathering, no trapping, no nothing. And as we can see, even though it was a botched cast, the rigidity of this 0.4i mono saved the day and that would have still been fishing for us. For this next spot, I've dropped down to a two ounce lead. I've dropped down to a two ounce because it's a little bit softer. If I used a three and a half ounce lead, there's a risk that the end of the hook link will get plugged too far into the silt. Because I'm only using a two ounce lead, I'm gonna rely on the lead plugging a little way into the silt. I've also clipped on a little five bait stringer. And when you're fishing running leads, you've got to hit the clip, you've got to feel it down, then it's going to present lovely. A very, very, very soft thud that was. I got my drop, but very soft spot. Softer the thud, the softer the spot is. As long as I feel the lead hit the bottom, I'm happy. So let's set the clutch on this reel. It's obviously no good locking it right up like that because I mean, I've got good backrests and stuff, but the chance of that is just going to go in. With running rigs, it's really important that we use the clutch in order to help hook the fish. The weight of the lead isn't really doing much. It's just to kind of get us out there. Yes, it acts as a pivot point, etc., but we're relying on the clutch now to hook the fish. So it's no good if the clutch can just spin like that because the carp is just going to bolt off into the distance and he's not going to be well hooked. What I'm looking for is this kind of halfway house. I'm looking for something whereby I have to pull to get low enough to clutch, but it's not so hard that the rod moves. It's no good holding the rod and pulling it like that for the test. You need to test it on your setup. So I'm not touching the rod here, just pulling it like that. That's going to be fairly stiff. We'll give them a bit more freedom. That's nice. To further enhance the bolt effect, I'm going to use my white line clip here. Just clip that in there. Carp's going to hit the rig. It's going to lock up like that. You're then going to hit that line clip there. You're going to have to pull quite hard to pull it out of the clip. Bang, he's out the clip. Then that clutch is going to turn. And that ensures that they're nailed before you've even got to the rod. I've kept this as simple as possible using the least amount of specialist items. You only need a few basic rig tools to tie this rig. It doesn't matter whether you're just starting out or whether you've been carp fishing for 30 years. You need this rig in your fishing. So there you go guys. Hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any questions at all, please do not hesitate to drop me a line.